Hi, it's Victor here from Trend Following Trading for Beginners. And in today's episode, I want to discuss how to handle volatile market. Coming up next. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Um, just like the title said here. Um, the last couple of days, we basically see a lot of volatility. We're just into New Year's, you know, today is the 7th of January. And, uh, you know, on the 2nd, um, American already, you know, bombed um, some people in Iran and caused quite a bit of mayhem. And um, the, it basically, this action from by Donald Trump just suddenly you know, kicked a lot of dust in the Middle East and the oil price and the... Uh, Gold and silver prices jumped up, and uh, also uh, basically the, um, the U.S. dollar's gone, uh, basically gone up a bit, uh, because everybody is worried about what the retaliation is from uh, from Iran. So, uh, you know, British pounds, Australian dollar, euros against the U.S. dollar, all gone down. You know, just just because of that. I mean, this this is like um, volatility that you never. Um, basically anticipated you know, the market just happened somebody just do something in this case a uh, president of the united states is something to another country uh however people must uh, i mean american try to uh, justify the action uh for me i mean uh, i just feel very sad you know uh, donald trump can send things and just do whatever he wants without you know um telling uh, you Iraq first what's actually happening you know um, uh, those kind of stuff and then just kill anybody that doesn't they don't like especially there's a lot of bad people around you know why why don't the you know, American go send me out to to those people um the, it just just beyond me but basically this causes a lot of volatility in the market and base a lot of times you don't you, this is unexpected this is what we call the, the black swan scenario the the uh fat tail that something just happened but if you look at um use this example and then look at uh both oil quit oil um doesn't matter it's quit oil or wti or and look at it through uh eyes of the uh, lens of uh, gold and silver you basically see the patterns that um for example for oil for um um let's say wti you see um um basically the price has been above 200 day moving average um, saying something like mid november and it's just slowly creeping up you know and one thing i mentioned before in my like looking ahead uh, kind of thing to oil i just i just don't understand how oil can go up even slowly uh because overall my view is the cost of the trade war between china, us and china and the slow down general slow down just around the world um i i just don't see there's a lot of shipments sending back and forth between different countries and because of slower growth the the increased use of um petrol petroleum and its products it's probably come down but you know the market is had its own thinking it's one way or another and it's pushing the crude oil uh, up slowly. Um, not many people talk about it much during the last couple of months, just slowly creeping in. And volatility is very, very low. And same thing for gold and silver as well. And it's just basically slowly moving sideways. Silver, um, for example, has been you know, not doing particularly too bad recently, but you know, he has been in a, a downward price channel since uh, August last year. Basically, a, 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 a triangular flag uh, with downward movement pushing the price down and lower and lower. Um, then, um, December, um, yeah, about mid December, early December, about well, middle to late December, that trend line is sort of broken now while most people are you know, on holiday, you know, and, um, and then the price just moved up, same as gold as well. And uh, the last couple of days of December, we're seeing things, I mean, there's price action there moving up and down. And uh, silver, both silver and gold make some hay while, while the sun is shining. And then suddenly Donald Trump's actions and then push the market going up a lot. I mean, more so for gold than silver, same thing for the oil. But, but all, all this, both crude oil and uh, metal, so to speak, um, um, has been basically quietly moving up, you know, without much you know, market commentator talking about it. And then suddenly you have large movement, and then what uh, I think people is f flight for safety, basically, as far as I'm concerned. 
will worry about the Middle East situation, what that will spill out to the uh, U.S. and other market, and um, you know just worry about crude oil and and, and go just basically fight to safety, and um, just you know people buy more uh, gold just to be to be sure of you know and then that causes the the U.S. dollar strengthen, especially look at the yen I mean going up you know to one oh seven fifty or something area against US dollar from one oh nine or something. So it's moved for a short space of time. And um if you as a trader and try to trade this, it's very difficult at this stage, you know, when everything's already happened. But as part of trend following is concerned, um this is exactly the type of things that we try to catch. That is in a very quiet uh, market, nobody much talks about it. You know, I mean, in the media and stuff. And you're tracking, uh, for example, in here is crude oil as well as the uh, metal is, and gold and silver here. And then um, all of a sudden, things moving without uh, any predefined news. You know, nobody's it's like Fox, CNBC, whatever, they are talking about it at all. And then you see the price moving up, and you're scratching your head, should I follow the system, my trend following system, say go in, because it has broken certain rules, and then you know, it's uh, go above the, the what your uh, downtrend is defined as it is, and then moving out of the range, and then your system say go in and buy. And you basically say that that's not, same as what the fundamental is uh, talking about and wh what are you going to do I mean for me it's very simple I just follow my system my system has been there just uh, I spend lots of time on it just try to you know, make uh, heads and tails out of things and analyze it and back testing it and then when things happen you know, I just go to follow the system even though it is not um, doing exactly what you know the fundamentals is saying and I just fo follow the action. So this is what uh, probably might, uh, what um, um, Warren Buffett used to, uh, used to say, I think in some of his books as well, that in short term, the stock market is a voting machine, in the long term, it's a weighing machine. So I think in the short term, because of the volatility of the US action against Iran, it pushes uh, the gold and oil, crude oil, up further than is anticipated. But um, and then uh, over long term, then depends on the world situation, the economic situation, you know, um, quit all and go with and settle down uh, back to its normal range, you know, less volatility, that kind of thing. So at this stage, when everything is on, on the news, so to speak, um, it's very hard for traders to try to jump in, you know, especially these spikes. You know, if you look at the charts in uh, quit oil and go for the last couple of days, I think yesterday or something. You see, um, um, it jumped up. I Means fi fi Friday was a was problem. Saturday was a problem, and then and then Monday continue. You know, with the remnant of the Iran, um, talking about retaliation to to US. You know, the the price in good oil and gold shoot up. But if you look at yesterday prices, it came back down. And you look at the chart from last night, uh, from yesterday, and you see a big tail. Basically, what I call a. Uh, like a kangaroo tail, some people call it, and um, basically it's a it's a cross with a very long tail. You know, um, uh, it's a bit like a sting, you know, showing up. And uh, I think this is what uh, Jesse Livermore used to call it a pivotal pond. And if so long as the price don't you know move above the the end of that big long stick from yesterday, as far as concerned, uh, it is a um, trend uh, reversing signal. But as far as trend following is concerned, my system still say buy. So I stay long, but I'm not going to add any more um, trade on it because this is uh, this long tail, this pivotal point, kangaroo tail things, is telling me there is a signal here from the market saying the market is rejecting all these high prices. Yes, there may be sudden fear uh, in the market and push the price up and everybody gone in, but this is not something uh, the, the big boys, so to speak, the the um, big pension funds, uh, big hedge funds, uh, uh, sees it and basically you know, push the market back down to the other, uh, other way. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's very volatile these last couple of days, especially since Friday. And in, in these two um, um, markets, basically, that the metals as well as the crude oil market 
And now, basically, if if I were to go into it, if you ask me, I would basically go in with minimal, really, really minimal of amount. You know, um, if I do in spread betting, I just go in like you know, ten p a pawn or whatever minimal I allowed, and just establish myself in a, a position. But then let the market settle down before I do anything. I just watch the market. Now it's not really the time to go into volatile market, especially this volatility. You think of oh, um, there's sudden problem here, uh, geopolitical problem. Let's jump into safe haven markets, gold uh, uh, or yen against U.S. dollars. And by the time uh, the ne- things on news, I mean, especially forex is 24/7 market. You may probably be too late, and um, and also because of this uh, sudden situation happen. How, how you handle y- your your system? Your system probably tell you. You know, if it's trying for a system, say go and buy. But then, like, like I said before, the the charts here actually show you something else. The market is rejecting certain high prices. So your system's saying, you know, continue. But as far as I'm concerned, because the market is also showing a signal to say there's a reverse, possible reversal. So I I would say I take two together. I would basically say, okay, I would still go to the market um, with the what you call um uh, um. Um, following all my system, I should say it, okay. But I won't put a b- any any big uh, big position there. So if I normally put down, you know, one percent per trade, I obviously say put half half a percent or whatever minimum, just just in case because I, I don't like this indication of this big long tail that's out traveling. So in in a way, here especially for a time market, you need to protect yourself because the market can move uh, for you in your favor very quickly, but. This is what most people think about. Wow, I can make some money very quickly. But in the volatile market, it goes can go both ways. It can go against you very quickly, uh, and especially when we're doing, uh, you know, using end of day trade system. I um, mean, during the day we don't really look at the charts. You, know, you can just move wildly over the day, and in the evening you look at, you know, the, the end of day data, and um, and basically look look at it, and, and you basically see you might be sucked into some something that you you not want want to get into, and then make make yourself a loss. So to actually control your losses and also your emotional state, your know, balance state, you basically in volatile market either you don't go into trade, or if you trade for a system to trade, you know it's a volatile market you try to reduce the amount of uh, exposure so to speak so the amount of money that you can lose and um, it is is minimal and you you have to have this uh, always when you trade no matter how volatile or quiet the market is whatever your system says and uh, there's a possible trade here showing you to urge uh, uh, showing you a signal to go in either sell or buy because that uh, what your system said there's always a chance that this might not work out. Okay, your system only have an edge and showing you one thing, one thing only, a possibility of this trade, the system is flagging up, it can be a possible, a potential positive uh, uh, trade, you know, that give you a positive result, give you some money, so to speak. But it's only a potential, it's not set in stone. It's not God tells you this will definitely work. I mean, that kind of thing, it, it never happens. You know, the, the market is always going to do its things. Remember, we're trading human emotion. And nowadays also with computers, you know, doing algo trades and stuff. You know, they just look at hard core facts, you know, figures, numbers. If it's right, it do its thing. It doesn't right itself. It just jump out. So, I um, mean, um, I think overall with the uh, algo trade just exacerbate, you know, make even the volatility even worse than before, that kind of thing, because it's just a computer with loads of money just dump things into the market very quickly in short space of time, producing big long spikes, and then basically just move, move you around, and just a bit um, difficult sometimes. So you just have to uh, watch out basically what you really need, need to do in, in, in a you know, really volatile market. And uh, this this is just basically my my two cents worth on on this one. So at the moment, both of this um, oil, um, could both crude oil and uh, WTI, I am long for that. Um, but f- uh, f- uh, I have already reduced my uh, exposure because of this long tail. Same thing for gold. I've been on it for a long time. Um, the, um, basically, this consolidated pattern. I've been watching it, and uh, I have reduced my position now as well because of this long tail. But one thing is, uh, at the end of the day, here is what it is: your system say going, you go in. But depends on the market. 
Okay, you have the right to not to uh, add more extra trade, no, we are pyramiding trade. That's what I used to do. It, it depends on the situation. If this if this uh, situation is very volatile, also um, the charts and uh, other indications showing you telling you there's possibility of a reversal. You know, the first things we need to think about is not about how much money you can make from your system, it's how much money you can lose. So in a volatile market, give yourself more breathing room. You know, if the if the price move wildly up and down, um, I, they basically just like buy, uh, gain in the market with the with the bare minimum that is, uh, yeah, that you um, whatever system you trade on, and just just go in market and just take it easy. Don't try to lump, you know, because uh, lump into go straight in the market with loads of money in it because it, the market can go both ways. If it go against you, uh, then basically bust your emotional bank uh, not just your trading bank account and you really uh, get uh, very upset and you get out of this balance state that what Mark Douglas has been talking about um, in the in the podcast which I put, sort of put put together uh, last couple of episodes before um, you need to have a balance view you know a calm mind and also have understanding that there's whatever edge your system has and show you a trade to get in is only telling you there's a possibility of making money but not necessarily it's sending in stone the only thing you can really control is how much you can lose so in a volatile market uh, I would say you know your system say going going but you know watch your backside reduce your uh, trade size or share size whatever it is just reduce your your risk and then handle it properly and also watch the market when it's really volatile so I hope this episode is useful to you and if it is please subscribe and and also tell your friends about it so more people can uh, learn about trading and uh, and get involved and uh, hopefully um, they can learn something from it. Okay, I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye.